Welcome to Shopping King back once again. So, I'll talk the video. Symbiotic Titan, who is the real man behind G3? <laughs> Take me back to the good old days of 2010 and the 7 and the 7:30, not yeah, the 7:30 p.m. time slot every Friday. A brand new Symbiotic Titan episode will come up. Cartoon Network. Back when I had this, he was amazing. But on to the main point. We rarely seen this guy at all. Uh, he only shows up for about approximately two episodes that I can recall. And that's more or less it. So pretty much G3, as Solomon explains, which fun fact, Solomon is a character based off of a Robert E. Howard character named Solomon Kane. So that's why he's called named Kane. I didn't know this until I learned from a YouTuber Rage the Holler about what's who Solomon Kane or what it was, the character, and how the creator Robert E. Howard also made con on about Barry before sadly taking his life. But yeah, Solomon Kane is an entire reference to a character I didn't even know. But overall, G3 is a non government backed organization that they claim defends the planet Earth, all right, from from galactic threats. So I thought, you know, it's, uh, it, was, it also helped uh, hide, uh, hide Elena and Lance from the uh, military when it was on the run after Octu was shut down because of the uh, power surge. I forgot exactly what that was, but it was shut down because of that. And they've pretty much been a force behind the scenes ever since the series started. I think that was their day one with Lance and the line Lance and Octus landed on planet Earth. But, uh, I'd say some of the most interesting things pointed out by Lance and Lina and Octus is the fact that one, the frequency codes to that gravity machine was inside of Octus database already. Two, that Lina and Lance both noticed that they have Gavionic technology that they use. But it's not as advanced. As you got a sense to see what it was like on uh, Lance and Lina's home planet. And there's a way more advanced, but then again, they were invaded by, <laughs> by Jenna Medulla. And the traitor had the planet invaded by a bunch of organic looking aliens. So it's just a, maybe better about, not about what type of technology you got, maybe about who was actually went through strategy and uh, brute force mission and perfect planning. Well, they're not as advanced in the Lance and Lance technology, but they're up there. They are recognized to be similar, similar to how Solomon fights his pretty much more or, lack, more or less the exact copy like Lance. There is pretty much no difference. It's like they came out the exact same training academy. Aside from the fact that 9 times out of 10, Solomon is 100% a human being, and Lance, of course, is, 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 is <laughs> Galvin, I'm choking up, it, it's, it's from a, a plenty. I'm choking up in the words, I don't know why. Now, you gotta be able to say these things. But, um, and then after the whole, uh, uh, season one, I guess, I mean, season one, episode 11, the forces of deception were, <laughs> Solomon <laughs> went in there as Cain, and find out how you know everything that the Titan can do in Octus and Elena and what had to do with everything with the watches and everything and interrogating Lance. Now uh, pretty much how true was it? Was a guy who's interrogating Lance just tell me what I want to know and let you go how true was that? Yeah, because Solomon never didn't want to hurt or kill Lance and Elena, but you can argue they killed a lot of their men. <laughs> that should not be funny. But uh And then after Solomon's one-man mission to figure out how the Titan works, he gets scolded by a superior officer. And we were just informed that Solomon was a man behind the machine, but no, there's another man who's hooked up to some type of machine. We don't know how much of a, a machine or person this actually is. We do know this guy wear clothes. And a few silhouettes we've seen of him, he can move around and do things like that. But overall, he gets scold he scolded Solomon about what he did, and he recommended he never do anything like that again, and just to drop the subject. And it was just then, it's only two episodes later after Octus go is uh Octus and Lane and Lance is helping out G3 with a uh, space occurrence. I think it was on the space station, I forgot what it was. And then Octus is overloaded, all hope is lost. The uh <laughs> the General Ross character, which I'm just calling him that because there's like a vague similarity, he's not the same. Uh he makes his own robot, he gets beat up, he gets his wig spilled black. I think after killing one monster, I believe. Or trying to. I think he did kill one of them. It's just uh, the other times it failed. And after that, this mysterious man behind G3 comes in and just fix Octus like it was nothing. And since that was the last episode of the series, we've never got any extra implications of who this guy was. We don't have a name for this man. He's just, as far as you know, like uh, the cloth and respect the gadget, he's just a man behind the scenes. The one you truly have to worry about. Usually the people that you see or at least your problems in the long run. But the man behind he <laughs> he just fixes Octus like he's nothing. Nothing. He just goes on his way. 
Oxus is not just fixed. The Titan is, is, a, is a bluish color. It's better. It's stronger. It's, what do you do to him? So it's pretty much obvious that uh, that this whoever this guy is, is from the same planet of Lance and Alana. He is get Galavani. Well, I'm choking up on that word today. He is from that planet. But what his relation to the king, General Medulla, and everything else, and why is he on Earth? I could come up with a few theories why. Because there's a lot of uh, Galavanian history that we just don't know about the planet. We don't know what happened to everything else. We don't know what, uh, what type of interplanetary conflict it was in. We never informed why they built the, uh, they're not called, a uh, Lance Armor. I forgot what they called it then. We never know why they built those or who they was using those to fight against. Because even in the ep actual episode, we really didn't see too many use them during the invasion, if at all. And it's not really given a specific reason of why. It could just be a budget type of thing where it's really hard or take a time to rebuild. We don't see too many people use them. And we do know that Lance's father is possibly dead is a question mark. I have no problem either way if he's dead or alive. But he's unknown. But whoever this guy is knows Galavanian technology. He's able to re uh, <laughs> recreate it on Earth. And for some strange reason, he has never had any interest to come back to his home planet. And he's just been here ever since. I think they do have space technology. I don't know if they can go through space, G3, but I do think they have space technology. But, uh... It is interesting. I do believe, number one, he's rather the creators of Actus or help somebody work on Actus. And uh, there's no other way he was able to fix Oxus, and he pretty much already know everything about the Titan, more or less. Sure. Uh, it's pretty much running on a need-to-know basis in G3, especially with Solomon, the man behind the scenes, and we're like, well, you know, what's, what's this and that? Don't worry about it. Uh -huh. Just keep ads and tabs or anything and help him out when I tell you to help him out. But 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 there's more to the case, don't Solomon. Just drop it. Let it go, man. Let it go. So you obviously have to have some type of relation to the planet. Now, this could easily be the king's brother or some high-tech scientist. It could be anybody. Anybody. As far as there could be Lance's long-lost uncle working on Arctis and everything else. Because, uh, it'll, only, it'll be the only explanation where the technology comes from. And why he got that, well, he could have a robotic can, or he could just be hooked up to it. We don't know which one, which one is which. And then you have to go to him, why did he leave the planet? How come no one has seen him? How has he become, been gone for so long? And why uh, start G3 to planetic Earth? Now, we could be having a Transformer Prime type situation where the planet Earth is more than what they think it is. And how the planet Earth has some type of valuable resource or plays some important role in the universe of why he's here. And why he's been here for all these years and why he never chose to get home. He could also just be somebody who was exiled, thrown out to the streets. And now he's just, hey, you know, um, I'm going to help out these people. They're my people. And it's just, hey, it could be as simple as that. He could be exiled, put himself upside. But there's a specific reason of why he watches Lance and Octus and the others protect him. Even come in to save the day. And upgrade Octus is just... He just comes out of nowhere and just does it like he's just nothing. Like he was just... Eh. So if he was the creator of the symbiotic Titan, if he did put these things together, it will make sense. Because besides from that, even Lance's uh, mech looks nothing like the uh, Titan itself. It forms the Titan. But the only thing that looks like a Titan hand is that hand we saw when Solomon was talking to the man behind the scenes. So what does that imply? I can't really tell you because he could be a full-blown cyborg he could be hooked up to a machine to keep him alive but he's obviously mobile <laughs> but I wouldn't explain why he's protecting earth it would explain why it seems like he's stuck on earth and he has no attention to go because he collected all these artifacts and all this technology and then he did like uh, get like a uh, Lance and Atlanta ship that could like they, they did I can't recall 100% if or not but he did have it, have the alien arms and everything like that. And he is collecting all this stuff for some specific reason. Now, could he know about uh, General Medulla and the treason? Mm, I would say yes. And that's purely if he went through uh, uh, this database when he was rebooting them. And that's a strong guess. Because Solomon was asking those questions for his own concerns. Because he went to go tell the man behind the scenes, well, you know, hey, look, I found out so many stuff how to tighten work and the watches and everything. And he's just like, you drop it, you let it go immediately. I know you'd ever do something like that again without my command. As you can see, you can get what I mean by how those operating on a need to know basis. He's only telling Solomon as much as they need to know. And it's obvious that Solomon might know what this man looks like. And if he does, 
Uh, yeah. You have to the questions, why are you there? H how long is the guy villain history? And what did they truly use those mechs to fight against? As far as you know, the Titans the only thing we've seen like that. And only the Kane knew about it. As far as real concern. The trade didn't know about it. Mr. Medulla is completely blindsided, but he's like, hey, hey, how they could keep destroying these monsters? Give me the information I need to know. I don't know what you're talking about. Alright, turn up the juice. Turn up the juice. So this obviously had to be a very close knit but the thing I always thought was quite strange, he needs to be the king's long lost brother, an uh, exiled brother. Why? It could be some type of failed coup against the throne. Well, it could be the same man who helped out Lance, his father, on the project. And after that whole thing with Haywire, he blamed himself for it and he just left the planet. That would not explain the Shard G3, though. Kelly Solomon, hey, look, he's a loyal soldier and he actually want to do good in this world. But for the man behind the scenes, it's great that he's want to save the earth and help people, but we don't have a reason of why. He's just there. He shows up rarely, he does what he wants, and he just leaves. Just leaves just like that. He gotta have his own suspicions of why the princess, or, I don't know, it depends on how much he knows. It really does. Because obviously, G3 is recording all this footage to make sure everything uh, is being monitored and taken care of. But, uh... It goes to another thing, when I said the technology limitations earlier, G3, as far as Solomon concerned, could do nothing against the monsters that were showing up. Absolutely nothing that was causing havoc and obliterating everything. They could not do anything. That was just careless bystander. The military man, I'll call him the Thunderbolt, he tried to do something. And, you know, like I said before, the robot was destroyed. So it was just, uh... They held back by technology, held back by budget. Which is some other type of reason. Because that is the only hand we've seen like that. The Titan itself and the man behind the scenes. So the only two people who have arms that look exactly like that. Lance Robot don't look like that. Atlantis does, of course, and any other machine or robot we've never seen. Similar time we never find out who made the machines. And how long ago did they use these, uh... I can't remember the Lance's, uh, mech. I'll just call it that. We don't know how long they've had the technology, how long they've been using it, or who the person who made it. All we know is, it's been there since Lance was a child, and that wasn't used during the invasion, as far as I can remember. You would know most of the uh, service corps should have it, even though the traitor had his. So I don't know why he's activated, it could be a chance that they deactivate him. Somehow the traitor did, and that's how nobody could be able to uh, activate the machines. Hey, I could be very rusty, and this whole part could be wrong. I, don't know, I always find it interesting because uh, nobody else makes videos about this series, but he's always been the most uh, interesting character throughout the entire series. Besides, you know, the main character is Solomon, Mr. Solomon Kane. Amazing! That's an amazing Robert E. Howard reference. It really is. The guy just gotta check out the character Solomon Kane. Uh, it is an interesting one. Interesting one indeed. But uh, I have no grand plans besides it could be Lance's uncle, it could be Elena's uncle, or. Uh, He's a scientist who made the Titan itself. Why would he be stuck on Earth or st stand on Earth? It could be there's something more to the Earth that uh than what meets the eye. He could be here to protect the planet, or he could be somebody who's been exiled and they use Earth to set up his own base of command. Mm. Maybe in some far off planet, the king always had it to be a planet. Hey, if anything happens on Galavanna. That we can use Earth as a backup with the closest thing that looks to him, and hey, we will be able to just blend right in, and nobody will be able to tell the difference. Could be. Could be. We know there's resistance still on the planet. We know that uh, Mr. General Medulla don't have a complete opportunity. Not at all. And we don't know when he became a traitor and betrayed the king. We know one moment, and Lance flashback, they were really close, and next thing you know, uh, Mr. King, you're gonna have to die. Well, not die. Well, let's just stay around for a few. A few weeks to a year, squeeze as much information that I can out of you, and will make you watch. You lose everything around you. Everything. Uh, uh. I believe that could be one of the biggest reveals that could ever happen throughout the series. Who is this man behind G3? 
because Solomon's a lawyer soldier, follows orders, but this man here, he just he just has all the answers. He has the technology because somehow they was able to use the exact same technology, so he just can't be a no name. A potential military leader, a potential sibling of somebody, or a high tech scientist. Could even need, why would they lose a high scientist like that who can develop all this technology? He could be a part of the same scientific team as Lance. Maybe after Lance's father's passed away, he was like, hey, never again. Or maybe in case for a rainy day to need a weapon. A weapon like no other to ensure, no matter what happens, that the Gavana people will be protected into the future. Because the Titan is upgraded, he becomes less clear inside the uh, final episode. A hero's return. And it's just, uh. <sighs> I just hope one day, Ganny and the good old boys will be able to return to the series. Because he said the only thing stopping it is, you know, fan support and making sure, you know, uh, people are backing it. And the sad reality is when you work for these big studios like Cartoon Network and Nickelodeon, you do sell out the creator's rights. So it's just, uh, hey, if Samurai Jack made that much money who was able to do that, I'm not going to act like somebody out of type with the most popular series, but it was going back to back. Like the 730 time slot. Is a real what well, used to be a real dead time slot. Slammed him right at the deal back then. It was a big deal back then, indeed. So, what a show ever come back? I can never say. I still say it's amazing. So, to this day, getting in his team does some amazing work. Getting himself, the guy's a legend. Boy, he really is. No one does it like getting the guitar. It's just nobody. Whether it's Primal, whether it's Samurai Jack, everything from Destin Lab to his help on the Power Fork Girls. The man, the man has carved up a piece in history. And he's only like 50. I thought he was older than that, but no. Like the rain, same age as my mother. So it's just, uh, the man, they got a whole lot of juice in the tank. Still fairly young. Hey, you can do it, man. You can do it. A season two could happen. If it's just exclusively on Amazon, if it's exclusively on Adult Stream, I would take it the last 10 episodes. That was able to wrap up Samurai Jack. He will be able to wrap up Symbiota Titan. But yeah, that's been more or less my ideas on the man behind the scenes of G3. Because it's odd, like we got all the clues. We pretty much more or less knows that he's found Lance on Lance's uh, uh, planet. That he has some knowledge, uh, advanced knowledge of the government technology. That he has some type of connection to making the Titan. Because he's able to upgrade Octus and repair Octus. Like, well, you know, I could have done this at any time. It took you long enough, old man. But even then, why well, have no contact with Lance and Elena? If he knew that Elena was royalty, or let's say he was some type of an uncle, why not help them? Why not do more? You know, they gotta reveal yourself, but. So if it's not like a blood relation, he obviously has some type of high standard position. Obviously. Obviously, some type of high tech, high advanced scientist, and he obviously is some type of exile. It could be a case that he's not fit for space travel. That he's literally stuck on the planet Earth and space travel is just, hey, whatever condition his body went through, he's just never going to take it. So he's uh, on planet Earth, protecting the planet, and ensuring life goes on. Who knows? Who knows? Because all the clues are there. But what exactly happened? Why he's not there? How old is he? How much does he know and don't know? Who knows? Who knows? Because with the Titan around, well, you know, why would he? Have, why would G3 have to do any heavy listing? Titan just cleans everything up. Hey, and maybe when things got truly died, hey, maybe he was on uh, taking a chance with the general and his uh, big mech machine. Maybe he believed, hey, maybe just maybe humanity be strong enough to do it himself and have the budget. Let's see what happens. Oh, that failed? Well, time for the contingency plan. Hey, Octus. Time for you to get that upgrade. Yeah. Uh, I really love this show, boy, Dylan. Everything, how everybody can recognize the technology to Solomon can fight the exact same. It's He has to be some military official, some high tech scientist. As far as you know, he could have held the position that Lance's father used to before he, he uh, vanished. I can't say dead because it's never said he died. He's never said he died, but it never said he was alive either. So it could be one of those cases where it's more or less implied he died. But in this case, there's no guarantee that Lance will ever see him alive. 
I do believe there's a chance that Lance can like have one last conversation with him years down the line. But uh, mm. I think eventually General Medulla will come to uh, planet Earth himself. For what reason? Is that the fact that the Earth holds something that he's been wanting for a long, long time? Him and whoever he's uh, whatever made him change his mind. Him and that damn hat, because he's obviously not like he used to be. And I doubt, well, you know, I've been in the shadow and they've had this animosity. I doubt that. And it could be a sad case. That, hey, maybe this guy's defending the Earth from whoever's, uh, whoever changed with General Medulla around. It sounds like there's a whole lot of lies, a whole lot of deception. And it seems like it could be a showdown between the two of the oldest men. Two old rivals of Galavan history. They tried to invade once. Years ago, it failed. I was able to get the job done. But they was able to get some of the inside. And destroy from the inside out. They was finally able to succeed. But in case such anything happened, planet Earth would be used as a contingency plan to evacuate the people here. And uh, Earth is like this uh, backup secondary safe haven for them. They can blend in. They already have their own piece of the world cut up with G3. But hey, as far as I'm concerned, there's just a bunch of normal human beings. Because that right there, it wouldn't make sense. This is the fact that who would be the man behind General Medulla then? I'm not going to act like he's mind control, but he's obviously not the same man we once knew from all those years ago. And it's never truly implied that he's doing this all alone, but it's not truly implied that he's working with somebody either. So as far as you know, he's uh, working for a parasitic race. That made him see the world a little bit differently. And we have the ultimate class. The final showdown on Earth. One big laser space battle. <laughs> and the symbiotic Titan be able to make one big gun. Like he's Travis Touchdown and just blew him away. But who knows. We have to be kind of like thoughts and opinions. Who do you believe is the man behind G3? Do you believe he has some type of connection to the king? Elena's father? Lance's father? Some type of blood relation, or he's just a high tech scientist who knows some things, who exiled himself to a planet that could potentially be a safe haven for the Gallifreyan people. Maybe he made the ultimate sacrifice. He gave up his former life, his his planet, his everything, just to ensure a better future for the next ones. Hey, as far as you know, G3 can turn into the men in black, and Solomon can just turn into uh. <laughs> Agent X, hey look, hey look, how look, K, okay, I can be Agent S, alright, I can be Agent X, or like Solomon, I can't believe Solomon King was, uh, this whole time, I, I never, I, I never knew Solomon King existed, until I find out, wait a minute, it's like, wait, yeah, he does kind of look like Solomon King, wait a minute, and he, his, his fake name was King, that was amazing, it's been up to you, K, we got like, kind of subscribe, and it's approximately 11 o'clock, Monday, EST, and, uh, Peace.